reading YouTube, don't let ISIL win. And how do we let them win? By being terrorized. The ISIL goal are, goals I should say, are many. But when it comes to the terrorist acts they're committing in the West, their goal is simple to drive the Muslims of the world out of the West and away from Western, Western ideas and ideals and towards them, at least in theory. They need to turn the entire world against Muslims of our planet. And the hope is, is that people will then be driven towards ISIL as their only refuge. And so to achieve this, they commit atrocities against the whole planet. And while the tragedies that we have seen in the last few weeks, and most recently, Friday the 13th in Paris and Beirut, um, have been aimed at the Western, for the most part, Western targets, more commonly, ISIL attacks their own people. They attack Muslims. And I use the term own people very broadly because while ISIL members are in fact Muslims, they do not speak for the Muslim world and for the most part the Muslim world doesn't accept them as their as being legitimate Muslims. They have a very very narrow scope of what Islam is. And to say that ISIL speaks for Islam is much the way same way of saying that the Westboro Baptist Church speaks for all Christians. No. The Westboro Baptist Church are a handful of people who commit horrible nonviolent acts, while the ISIL is a group of people that commit horrible violent acts. They preach hate and prejudice discrimination. They are social conservatives writ large, given the power to do what they want and to force others to live the way they wish. They have decided that they are the enemy of all reason and all acceptance and all tolerance in the world. They are not the allies of Muslims, however, because every day they murder Muslims. They crush them under their rules. And unfortunately, the West is more than willing to help them by being prejudicial against is the Islamic people of, the, of Earth. Why we do this, I don't know. Why we cannot see through what they're doing, I don't quite understand. Because why I have a deep sense of sympathy, empathy, and compassion towards the people that have suffered the attacks at the hands of ISIL, not for a second do I blame the Islamic people of the world for them. I blame the people that committed the acts. I blame the people that detonated the bombs, that pulled the triggers, that swung the knives. I blame them. And though I would like this to be nothing but a sense of outrage at ISIL and a sense of solidarity with the Islamic people of the world, I think it's important to remember that the West is unfortunately complicit in some of the acts of the world that are being conducted by ISIL. How so? The West has been messing with the Middle East for centuries. Just in the last 15 years, America has done things that has created far more bad blood than good between the West and the Islamic um, peoples of the earth. Through horrible policies, through greed, through political myopia, it's just not... You could have thought of an absolute worst case scenario. I can guarantee you that is the policy that the United States has followed. So every time I see an act like this, I blame the people who committed it. But it doesn't take me long to see the fingerprints of America and the West all over the crime scene. The Islamic people of the world are just as much a victim, if not more so, 
of ISIL in the West is. We can't forget that. We have to be their allies. We have to support the Muslim friends and neighbors that we have. We have to make sure that we are supplying those who are fighting ISIL with what they need. The Kurds, the rebels in, in Syria. Because not only are they opposing ISIL, but they're also opposing Assad. We have to make sure that we give the, these peoples the tools they need to succeed. And we can also provide them the higher tech levels of military support they need from our Air Force. I am opposed to the idea of us putting ground troops into this, this conflict. I don't know if that's going to be possible. There's a very large mess. We are partly responsible and someone's going to have to do something about it. But reacting negatively to our friends and neighbors who are happen to be Muslim is not going to accomplish that goal. It will, however, help ISIL accomplish theirs. And we can't do that. We can't let ISIL terrorize us. When they knock you down, you stand back up. And you keep doing that. You have to show everyone that you're ideas and ideals are better than theirs. And that's what this is. A fight for ideas and ideas. Ideals. So what's it going to be? Is the West and America going to be an example for the Muslims of the world of people that, they're, that they consider their allies and friends? Or are we going to help ISIL prove to the world that they're right.